Hi, this is Nick Pizai with another video for the Operator Training Series. Today's video is on using AWWA standards for disinfection dosage control. A little something different for us, so I'm going to share the screen with you. Oops. So this is simple hypochlorite dosage determinations using the AWWA hypochlorite standard B300 for your calculations. Uh, B300 provides a lot of information for operators that I think is good for them to have. And we want to go over some of those tables and calculations for you. Provides background and operating information for hypochlorites in drinking water treatment and the disinfection procedures that you use in the field in your distribution systems. There's tables in there that you can use to help you operate uh, and calculate chlorine dosage easily. So I want to go over those together with you. So this is the traditional chlorine dose calculation that we have used since time immemorial for chlorine gas. Operators often use this formula to calculate chlorine dose. Pounds per day chlorine needed would be milligrams per liter times MGD times the conversion factor of 8.3 pounds per million gallons over one milligram per liter. Where the milligrams per liter is the dose of chlorine desired. The MGD is the instantaneous flow rate being treated and the 8.34 is that conversion factor showing the approximate equivalence of one milligram per liter dose to the addition of 8.3 flow rate of 1 million gallons. So example, how many pounds per day should the feeder be set for if the desired chlorine dose is three milligrams per liter and the plant flow is 3.6 MGD and you're using chlorine gas? You set up the formula this way, pounds per day needed would be three milligrams per liter times 3.6 MGD times the 8.34. And that works out to 90 pounds per day. So at that point, you would go to the uh, chlorinator, you would set the feeder for 90 pounds per day, and then you'd go back periodically, you'd, you'd make rounds. You see that the machine is actually feeding that amount, or if it isn't, you'd adjust it from time to time. You're also making sure that you get the desired effect. You'd take a chlorine residual and make sure that you, you don't need any more adjustments. Now, we should note that that 1 million gallons per day in this formula is written and used as 1, not as 1000000. Zero, 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 zero. So it's a whole number, basically. Your whole number with usually one decimal point. We want to make sure we use that properly in the equation. If you're going to use HTH or high, high test hypochlorite, you would need an extra step. Let's go over that one. High test hypochlorite, of course, is a source of chlorine used in many water treatment situations and in the field, especially. It's a white solid, comes in pill form, comes in granular or powder, contains roughly 65 or 70% available chlorine. So an extra step in the dosage calculator is needed because not all of the chemical that you add to the water is going to add chlorine dose. With the chlorine gas, all of the gas was considered part of the chlorine dose. With the HTH, only a certain percentage of 65 or 70% of is chlorine dose. The rest of it is nothing. So we have to make that adjustment. Basically, we would need to divide the dose of chlorine gas needed by the percent strength of the HTH. In the example of the previous slide, for example, uh, we determined that we needed 90 pounds per day chlorine. That was chlorine gas needed for the plant. If we were using HTH to do that same job, say at 65%, the dose would be calculated this way. The pounds per day needed would be 3 milligrams per liter times 3.6 mgd times 8.34 all calculated together and then divided by the 0 0.65, which is 65%. And that would work out to 138.5 pounds of HTH needed per day because of that 138.5 pounds of HTH, only 90 pounds or 65% is actual chlorine. That's how that works. So you might need to set the feeder to, to, uh, to feed the pounds per day or the grams per minute or whatever, and then do the same thing you would do with, with the gas at that point. But you see that that calculation needed that extra step. So now, when we're using the sodium hypochlorite, we have several steps we gotta go through. This becomes a little bit more complicated. Sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, of course, is a source of chlorine used in many water treatment situations and in the field also. It's a liquid. It contains roughly five to 20% available chlorine, but this varies. I've seen it as high as 22 or 23%, depending on the manufacturer you buy it from. I've seen it low at three or 4% too. So it comes in all types of uh, rather, rather long range of um, 
wide range of uh, percentages. So you got to be careful to know what you got. So in the example on the gaseous chlorine slide, it was determined that we needed 90 pounds of chlorine gas needed for the plant. If we were using sodium hypo at say 12%, the table in the B300 standard tells us that there is one pound of chlorine in each gallon of hypo at 12%. So we would look like this. The gallons per day needed would be the 90 pounds of chlorine times the quantity one gallon over one pound of chlorine or 90 gallons per day. We can see from this example, the reason why so many water treatment plants like to feed hypo at 12% because one pound, one gallon of it uh, is equal uh, to one pound of the chlorine. Uh, often when you buy it, it comes to you at 12%. Although a lot of places do, do cut it down to 6% because of the off-gassing problems. But one gallon per one pound at, at 12% works out pretty good for most operators, but you don't always get it at 12%. So we need to go through some calculations to see how that works. If the strength is different than one pound per gallon uh, chlorine, you must factor that in. And of course, you have to change that gallons per day to milliliters per minute and go to the feed pump to set it for the rate needed and of course make rounds to make sure you're getting what you actually thought you were going to put in. Of course, the sodium hypo doesn't come as a solid. It's a liquid and only part of it is liquid sodium hypo. So here's the calculations and some of the other things we've got to work with. And I'm suggesting at this point we try a different way. This is not as familiar to operators as the traditional way was, so I'm going to go over that with you. The B300 standard that AWDA puts out contains a table that provides information regarding the amount of chlorine available in sodium hypochlorite solutions based on percent strength. Using the values found in the first two columns of the table, you can make a simple linear graph that, that, that you can put together for your operators if they want quick information about the amount of chlorine available in the liquid amount of solution based on percent strength. You know, or even more simply, they could just take that percent number and multiply by 10 and that will give you the pounds per gallon or give you the feed number that you need. But given that the sodium hypo must be fed as a liquid and is used to treat a liquid flow of water, it makes more sense to me to use this information to bypass the previous steps that were used in the traditional conversion method for hypo dosage control. So let me go over that table with you. This is what it looks like. You see it's got six columns there. And the third column that's entitled chlorine equivalent pounds per gallon gives the information that most water treatment operators are using, you know, traditionally. So if you, if you take that third column and work, it, work your way down to uh, 1.000 pounds per gallon, you see that is equivalent to the trade percent of 12%. So when you get 12% chlorine, you got it at one pound per gallon. So if you need a pound of chlorine, you feed a gallon of, of that hypo at 12% and you got what you want. But notice you look to the left, there's something different there that I'd like you to focus on. If you know the strength here, whether it's 1% or 5% or 12% or whatever, then you know how many grams per liter are there. For example, if I had the 12%, I'd have 120 grams per liter. I just took the 12, multiplied it by 10, very simple calculation, and I have the 120 grams per liter. Of course, you know that if it's grams per liter, it's the same as saying milligrams per milliliter. So if I had 12% uh, available chlorine, I would know that I had 120 milligrams per milliliter of hypo. So for every milliliter of hypo that I feed to my water to treat it, I'm putting in 120 gram, milligrams. Pretty simple as far as I'm concerned. Let's see how we can use that to our advantage here. You know, you can make a chart for your operators. I mean, this is redundant, I think, but basically it's, it takes those values you just saw on the table, and puts it out on a graph. I know a lot of operators like to get their slide rule out and make sure that everything lines up properly. Uh, so if you want to do something like that, that's fine. You make that available to them, but it's pretty simple to just take that percent and multiply by the 10 and you're, you're right there. So here's some simple steps to figure the actual dosage. Multiply the treated water flow in gallons per minute times 3.785 then you would get liters per minute. That's simple. Take the gallons per minute and make liters per minute out of it. Example, let's say I'm, I'm treating a rate of 1,250 gallons per minute. I multiply that by 3.785, and I get a treated rate of 4731.25 liters per minute. So instead of gallons per minute, I'm doing liters per minute. I know it's metric, and a lot of people don't like metric, but follow me on this, it's really easy. So then I would obtain milligrams of, of chlorine per milliliter from the table like we just did. Remember I said that 12% would be 120 because we multiply by 10. 
then you can capture the amount of hypo being fed at the feed pump in milliliters per minute. So example, let's say you're using a 9% solution of hypo, which we know to be 90 milligrams per milliliter chlorine. You capture a feed rate of 46 milliliters of solution in one minute. Calculate the dose. 46 milliliters of solution being fed in one minute times the fact that each milliliter contains 90 milligrams. Divide that by the treated water in liters per minute. Everything's going to cancel out but milligrams per liter, so that leaves you with a dosage of 0 0.88 milligrams per liter. I didn't have to go through all those other steps that I did in the traditional way. I just did it this way and came out with the right, right dosage. I like that, that a lot better. So maybe try that and see if you get used to it. Here's a comparison of the two methods. Let's say you have an example that, that says your, your, setting, your feed setting for 7.4% strength, strength hypo is needed, but what feed percent setting of 7.4% hypo is needed to treat a flow of 6 MGD with 2.4 milligrams per liter chlorine? So here's the traditional calculation on the left. You would set the feeder setting at 24 milliliters per minute, or rather milliliters per minute, 2.4 milligrams per liter times the 6 times 8.34. You would have to feed 120 pounds per day of chlorine. You have 7.4% hypo, not 12%, because if you had 12, you'd have one pound per gallon. You have to take the 7.4 and divide it by 12, you get 0 0.62 pounds per gallon chlorine. Then you would take step three, where you take the 120 pounds per day chlorine needed, times the fact that one gallon gives you 0.62 pounds, you would need 193.5 gallons per day of hypo. But not all of that hypo is chlorine, so you're gonna have to make your conversion. I took the 193.5 gallons per day of hypo, multiplied it by the 3,795 milliliters in a gallon, and divided by the 1,440 minutes in a day, and I see that I would need about 508.6 milliliters of hypo to, to be fed to get the chlorine that I need. That's a traditional way of doing it. Well, on the right-hand side, here's the alternate that I'm suggesting. This is easy, I think. Maybe easier to some of you. I take the 6 million gallons per day and divide it by the 1440 minutes per day to get gallons per minute and multiply by the 3.785. And I treat, see that I'm treating a rate of 15,770.8 liters per minute. Well, I've got 7.4% hypo that I multiply by 10. That gives me 74 milligrams of chlorine per milliliter of hypo. So now it's a simple matter of taking the milligrams per liter of chlorine dose times the 15,770.8 uh, liters of water treated per minute. And I see that I come up with 37,850 milligrams per minute chlorine needed. And when I work that through, 37,850 chlorine divided by the 74 milligrams per liter chlorine, I come up with 511 milliliters per, hypo, uh, milliliters per minute of hypo needed, which equals or pretty much agrees with the 508 I calculated on the left. So very close. That's just a different way of doing it. So let's try a calculation from an actual chemical feed pump readout. Let's see how you do on this using, that, using those methods. On the next slide that I'm going to show you, there's going to be pictures of a pre and a post hypo feed at the Connecticut Ohio Water Treatment Plant, which is a 3 MGD water treatment plant treating an average of 1.3 MGD. With the information that you see on the slide, see if you can calculate the dosage in milligrams per liter for both of the feed points. The last slide uh, shows you the actual calculation using steps from the alternate method that was outlined here. So if you want to work this, I'm going to show the next slide. When you see the next slide, pause the video, try to use that method, see if you can calculate this, and then go ahead and start it up again. You'll see the answers. So I'm going to move on to the next slide now. This will give you the information you need to work the problem. The problem will be worked on the slide after that. So here's the two feed pumps at, at Conneaut. You know, this, there's the pre-chlorine set in milliliters per minute up top. The two bottom pumps, one of them is running. And that's the post-chlorine feed set. So you should be able to go in and see which you're running and actually take a reading right off of them. And assuming those are the milliliters per minute being fed, what are the milligram per liter dosages in milligrams per liter chlorine if the pumpage through the water treatment plant was 900 GPM and the sodium hypo was 12%. In one place, I'm doing the 11 milliliters per minute hypo feed. And in a post, I'm doing the 86.7 milliliters per minute hypo feed. So 11 milliliters per minute times 120 milligrams chlorine per milliliter is set for the pre. And the post would be 86.7 milliliters per minute times 120 milligrams chlorine per milliliter. 
When I work that out, I'm feeding, I see that I'm feeding 1,320 milligrams per minute of chlorine being fed on the pre side. And on the post side, I'm feeding 10,404 milligrams per minute of chlorine being fed. So those are the milligrams I'm feeding every minute. If I know the liters I'm treating every minute, which are, you've already calculated, you should just know milligrams per liter from that point. It's very simple. So remember, you got to you got to calculate that first. So multiply the gallons per minute of water treated by treated by 3.785 to change the liters per minute. We had 900 gallons per minute uh, being treated when I change it to liters per minute. I'm going to take that 900, and multiply it out, and I'm going to get um, 3,000, or rather, I'm sorry, the water being treated at 3,406 liters per minute. And I'll multiply that by the amount of chlorine being fed in milligrams per minute. In one case, it's 1,320, the other is 10,404. And I'm going to come up with about 0.38 milligrams per liter chlorine on the, feet, on the free side and about 3 milligrams per liter on the post side. So at this point, it'd be very simple to determine the, the number of milliliters per minute needed for new doses. Let's say the boss comes up and says, Nick, I want you to go feed 0.7 milligrams per liter on the post side. I'd go to the bottom of the left-hand slide there, left-hand side there, and take the 0.7 rather than the 0.3. I'd take 0.7 times 3, 406, 0.5. And then I come up with a new milligrams per liter minute feed that I need. So that's it. Give it a try on yourself. I'm going to conclude this presentation at this point, and I hope you did well. Good luck. Thank you.